one can have no smaller or greater mastery than mastery of oneself. This is something that Leonardo da Vinci said. There's two distinct meanings to the word mastery. One is the authority of the master, and two is a skill or knowledge that makes one master of a subject. And that this is what he means by the smaller and greater mastery. The smaller mastery is the one that you have control over yourself, and the greater is the one that allows you to have a skill or knowledge in a certain subject. So what he's in turn saying is that mastering yourself is the greatest mastery you can have. And it's also the most basic. So the, I'm doing this video because I recently had my bubble burst hard. I had to reevaluate everything I was doing. And I, I wasn't ready for that at the time, but I needed it. I, um, I had a very negative reaction from professional artists about my artwork. They, they thought it was the, the way I was doing it, the way I was going about it was disgusting. I, I suppose would be a word for it. And this made me really mad, but then I had to think, okay, why are they thinking this way? And why can't they articulate it in a way that makes sense to me? You know, if they're already there, why, why can't they just tell me what I'm doing wrong? And that that's something I've kind of learned is hard for people to do who's been doing it a long time. And, you know, this, this often results in you flailing around and ending up looking like a jackass. And this is what happened to me. But it, this was good because I reevaluated myself and I determined that, you know, I was way too big for my britches. I didn't know nearly as much as I thought I needed to know. I wasn't listening or learning as much as I thought I was. And this is what ends up having. This ended up giving me a loose attitude towards, towards art and a loose drawing style. I mean, I, I still have it. I still have this loose drawing style. You know, where, where I want to just draw like this. I just want to draw things. I, I'm not really thinking about what it is. There's no planning. There's no preparation. I just, you know, want to get things on the paper. And hopefully something comes good of it. And sometimes it does. But at the same time, I'm not learning anything. And I don't have anything substantial to show for the fact that I'm not learning. Although I believe this has benefited me. Just not in the right way. Not in the way that I wanted to be benefited. And that's frustrating. So I, I kind of thought that artwork was somewhat semi-conscious. You, you keep all the principles in the back of your head, like construction, you know, and perspective. You know, you just keep those in the back of your head and you, you just draw. You know, and the more mileage you get drawn this way, the, the better you get. And that, that sounds reasonable enough. But I'm not taking any time to reassess what I've learned or what I need to learn. And um, a big a, a big thing that pushed me over the edge was watching Bolin CK or Volinic. Um, he he has a really good psychological grasp of artwork, and he he's giving you the real journey. The real stuff, he's answering the questions, answering and posing the questions that need to be dealt with that people have been doing it a long time just can't articulate. And he even explains all that. He, he, he just gets so in-depth into the things, the questions you have, but the questions nobody's answering. I, I think that's awesome. That, 
that's even where my quote came from here was from his website but anyways i've been reevaluating my skills going all the way back to the very very basic the thing that i just say well i got this you know i got one per one point perspective you know i i you know i do it all the time it's like why why wouldn't i get this like why should i even go back to it and i i kind of really tried to dig deep into one point perspective and what I could have been doing wrong, what I could have misinterpreted because I started learning it a long time ago. So I kind of set it up with the good, the bad, the ugly. Got this one point perspective, like a simple, I don't know, stair step or something. And um, I the first thing I noticed was that I curve my lines when I'm doing this, which... I mean, I guess when you're sketching, you do this anyway. You 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 feel out the perspective, I guess. But at the same time, it's warping my perspective. You can see that because I couldn't seem to get this line straight. That this line's now off, and that the perspective's now oh so slightly off, although it is, and that that's part of getting down into the nitty gritty. And I also need, also think I need basic practice rendering, even though, you know, I understand a couple of things like things perpendicular to the light source have shadow on them and, uh, I, I understand it, but how well do I understand, do I understand it enough that I don't need to no longer come back to it? And so the good I chalked up as, um, what to do in the future. Like, um, I'll try to do this one point perspective with straight lines and decent rendering. So maybe I'll try to do a project with perspective. Um, maybe the goal being something like this, you know, and I, I, I think this, this picture right here actually says a lot. Um, it, and the name framed perspective and the way I should probably read the book, of course, but. The way they're saying, well, you know, you're framing it out with perspective. I you know, like this. Like how these buildings are positioned, frame out the main the main dude here. And you know, there there's this point right here that even frames it out. And of course there's like contrast all over the place. It's all very well thought out. Um I think well it has a good flow to it all right I, I think I kind of follow the shadows you know and a little bit of staging you know there's shadows down here there's this guy and the I guess the black against the white well the black against the white is the biggest contrast you can have so that's that's gonna draw your eye and it's gonna drive the flow and um, the perspective also blocks this out so it seems like um, the flow goes something like oh well here's another dark shape so the flow could go something like like this And it's really cool you know because it makes it you see everything you need to see you know your eye kind of sticks over here and I, I didn't really notice this guy at first and that could be because of the overlay but you know, your eye starts over here and it almost wraps around or cuts through this point right here I, just by analyzing this picture I think that's part of what they mean by frame perspective and even I think it's neat even the way the letters are put are in perspective. It's frame perspective in perspective plus it goes right with the flow here. It it, it just looks really nice. Um So my point was is that I'm going to try not to take what I don't know for granted, try not to assume that I know something 
or assume that somebody else knows something. Um, I'm, I'm just going to have to try to separate my practice and my projects and uh, not, not do any more of this where I'm just mindlessly doodling and not learning anything and not creating anything of value. which is a bad habit I have. So I guess that's about it. This video's lasted long enough. All right, you guys have a good day.